Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Tony Shaper. I'm the president of the London Center for Policy Research, and uh, welcome to Thought to Action, uh, where we go uh, deeply into key issues and discuss all those things which make America great and uh, remind us that there are things we must do to preserve the Republic. Uh, please check us out on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Google, well, not me, I'm not on Twitter, I'm gone, but, but LinkedIn, uh, Twitter for the London Center, Getter, I'm on Getter, uh, uh, YouTube, obviously, we're here. All these different social media outlets track, uh, like, share, subscribe, get the word out about what we're doing. And uh, obviously, uh, we uh, have a Patreon program. We'd like you to join that. We do something uh, called Ask Us Anything, which gets rather interesting and, and normally very funny uh, that you could participate in to ask us questions. So please look at that and, and join us for behind the scenes content and asking us anything. So without further ado, uh, I'm uh, joined today by Ken Harper. Uh, Ken is someone I, I met. He's right here in north near where I live. I know London Center is based in Manhattan, but here I am in North Carolina. Go figure. And uh, Ken is is someone I met at an event recently, and I was just struck by his purity of concept and uh, mission. So, uh, without further ado, Ken Ken Harper, welcome to Thought to Action. Uh, thanks for joining me today, and uh, uh, tell us about why you're running for office and what you're doing to become the next senator in North Carolina. Sure. First of all, Tony, I want to thank you for allowing me to uh, participate uh, on your program today. It truly was a pleasure uh, to meet you, excuse me, to meet you in uh, Shawan uh, County. Yes, I'm running for the United States Senate. And last week, it would be a little over a year uh, that we embarked upon this journey. Uh, thus far, we have been in a little over 60 plus counties uh, throughout North Carolina. But I heard a call. Um, I was sitting at my table a little over a year ago, and I was reading and, and praying, and I heard the Holy Spirit's, uh, I was reading an article uh, in the Epic Times uh, called- uh, it's Great said, publication. I've, I've done interviews with those folks. Good folks. Yeah. Great publication. And uh, the article said, Lord Trump has a shoe in in the race. And um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I want you to get into the race. Uh, I definitely <laughs> have my doubts and apprehensions. Uh, but um I was perplexed and I left my home with, uh, in, in Archdale and drove down to Ashboro. And uh, there were some ladies uh, lamenting in uh, Books of Million about issues that were going on in our country. And I listened and eavesdropped on the conversation literally for two hours, walked over to them and asked them to pray with me. And the lady said, young man, sure, I'll pray with you, but sit down and take that mask off. <laughs> and uh, so that's been a little over a year ago thus far. We uh, really truly resonated with uh, the grassroots. We uh, were endorsed by the North Carolina uh, grassroots. But from day one, Tony, our voice has been censored uh, here in the NCGOP. We had to fight at the convention in Greenville in North Carolina last May uh, just, to get on the, just to get on the stage uh, to have the two minutes of the same other United States Senate candidates. Yeah. If it wasn't for, uh, uh, you know, some of the local individuals getting involved uh, in, in uh, Guilford County and uh, also uh, uh, the black conservatives, I truly would not, not have had an opportunity to speak. But that hasn't stopped there. Um, we've had individuals such as uh, the John Locke Foundation, uh, the Salt and Light Conference, uh, Wake County uh, uh, at, their, at their convention, uh, the, the Moore County GOP Men uh, Club uh, refused to allow us to participate in the senatorial forum. Uh, last week, we had uh, we had 140 people, so we thought, registered for a fundraiser of which we paid for a band, a banquet hall, and some other things. And so we found out 110 of those names were completely bogus wow. and uh, linked back to the emails connected to Germany. So there's some, obviously some people out there that don't like what we're saying, but we're speaking the truth, the truth, uh, authentic truth. Uh, that Americans are truly hungry for that protect our freedoms and our constitutions. And so um, we're really excited because we, we believe that these types of uh, events aren't happenstance. And we think that we truly can be a standout in the uh, primary because for one, my background is I'm, I, I am in the financial service industry for the last 15 years. Uh, also, I'm a recovering a Democrat. <laughs> uh, so it's been a very unique journey to be here uh, today in the United States Senate race. So, you know, and that's a great point, Kid. A couple of things I want to just kind of break out a little bit further. Uh, first is the idea that uh, dirty tricks and suppression of thought. I, you know, I am um, going up. Uh, this is a story I've told folks uh, 
when I was when I turned 18, I turned 18 in October of 1980, and uh, I I could vote uh, in the November uh, presidential election uh, between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. And look, as a kid, I had no great understanding of politics. I really didn't. Uh, but what I looked at at that point was, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter had talked about getting used to the malaise, how we got to get used to expecting less. And I, it's like, uh, I just didn't think that was a good idea as an 18 year old. <laughs> like, why would I want that? And Reagan basically says, look, you know, if, if you're better off now than you were four years ago, then vote for him if you really are. If not, you know, there's a better way. There's a brighter America. Uh, vote for me. And I think that's where we're at right now. It's like, uh, I don't believe for a minute, Ken, no matter what political party you're in, that we as, as America should expect less of our own people and of our own system. And I think uh, it's those who want to just defend the status quo, this malaise, yeah. if you will, who really are out to stop you. I mean, is that, is that accurate? I mean, it seems like those who are already in power are pretty happy, uh, but they could care less about the little guy. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm in charge now, and I just want to keep things the way they are. Is that, is that, an, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, Tony, I believe you're right on with that assessment. I, I truly would concur uh, with, with that. But I believe it was a, a great Democrat who once said, you know, don't ask – uh, what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Right. And uh, truly, I think we have gotten so far away from personal responsibility and individuals understanding the, the capacity of the American dream and to go out and work for your goals and your objectives and actually be productive out in society. Uh, and, you know, I, I sadly believe that uh, I know you were voting in between uh, Reagan and, and Jimmy Carter, but I think that Jimmy, the ghost of Jimmy Carter, uh, has embarked upon the White House uh, in the uh, form of Joe Biden, yeah. as we look at his inflationary uh, policies and where we stand right now uh, on the national stage uh, with our open borders uh, and with the weakened economy right now in inflationary prices. So, Ken, that's my point. My point is, like, you're, you're talking about individual responsibility uh, down to the community level. And I agree with that. Yeah, me too. Uh, and then what I, I think we had to look at and when we first met, we talked about essentially a Reagan style national security policy, because I believe what we do in the micro, we should do in the mm. macro. It's not our job to be the policeman of the world. And when we talk about responsibility, we're not talking about detaching ourselves from the world. We're talking about like, you know, we have American suffering right now because of the economic decisions made by this administration. Yeah. I can't believe any administration would openly promote a policy that, that diminishes the productivity of citizens through higher gas prices, higher taxes, and hint, hint, this 20% tax on billionaires, it all gets put back on the people uh, who support the billionaires. It's all the all that commerce, it all goes back into that. Absolutely. It's like you're just taxing people a different way. It all, it all goes to the government. It's just how you get it. Do you get it from the middle class? Oh, no, we don't want to get from the middle class. We're going to tax the rich. Yeah. We're going to, you know, it's like the rich are going to pass it on. It's like, how do you not... So I believe it's this it's the self deception deception the left promotes, and anytime you criticize them, oh you just don't care about the world. It's like no, I care about the world. I care about my world and the people who I'm responsible for. Yeah. So this is this is the basic premise of promoting and being responsible is taking care of your own people, not being diffused diffuse saying oh there's some threat over there that's bigger than what we are. It's like, no, it's, it's not, it's not about Ukraine. It's about the fact that, that uh, we should be focused. On, well, I should think we should support mm -hmm. Ukraine. We have issues here in the United States that we need to focus on first. So uh, I think, tell us a little bit about this, this idea that we need to be focused national security wise on our own interests. Cause Ken, I think you've got a great well, handle on that. I think truly, if we look at uh, President Trump, he really talked about putting America first. And that mantra truly resonated with so many Americans. It awoken uh, a lot of people who were apolitical, right. who truly didn't, were not involved in the political process. And I think the left, as a rule, uh, doesn't want to hear thoughtful disagreement. Uh, I believe I read that somewhere in the New York Times. Um, and you look at what Joe Biden is actually doing. I mean, it's almost, uh, I, I would agree with Larry Kudlow. He, he's running a jihadists against uh, fossil right. fuels. I mean, on day one, he blew up the Keystone Pipeline. That was over 11,000 jobs connected to here in the United States and Canada. Um, he takes out uh, Alaska uh, drilling. 
a number of different pipelines. And then we have the energy department just literally sitting on their hands with LNG export contracts that potentially could be uh, an opportunity for one uh, to uh, bring the gas prices down, um, protect the interests of, of Americans. I mean, I mean, the price of gas has more, more than doubled. And, and really, if we, if we look at what Joe Biden has done on day one, we, we saw that President Trump uh, had, a, had sanctions on uh, Putin with the Nord Stream 2. And so what does Joe Biden do? Basically stops the energy dependence that we have here and capitulates uh, with, with our enemies. Yeah, I think we're completely weakened on the, uh, more on, on the world stage uh, with, with the lack of leadership that we've seen from day one. Uh, I've never seen uh, our, our country deteriorate so fast under the leadership of Biden and Harris. And uh, God needs to help us and we need, we need uh, the, the grassroots and we need leaders to truly dig in the dirt and fight uh, for our country. Because I mean, the, these are not American values for which this administration uh, uh, have, uh, 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 these are not American values that they are really truly leading us towards. Uh, but I believe they are for the demise of, of our uh, constitutional republic and are impeding upon the freedoms of Americans. So that's my concern is that, uh, uh... You're a former Democrat. Uh, I've ha I've actually uh, been very close to Democrats. Uh, we talked about a few off off of offline, and uh, folks who follow this follow our channel know who, who yeah. they are. And it's interesting that uh, some of the the, the 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 Democrats I came up with. I'll just mention the name, Jim Walker, Doctor Jim Walker. You don't know him. Jim was. Um, was uh, our pre-law uh, professor in college. Okay, he's a he's a traditional uh, liberal. He believed in free speech and the ideas of of uh, protecting uh, the mechanisms uh, of our democracy, mm -hmm. of our republic, for purposes of having the, the debates and 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 having thoughtful, uh, reasoned arguments. That's not today's left. Today's left is all about trying to stop any. Uh, any discussion of anything they, they disagree with. And science is not science. Science is, uh, is uh, what they determine it right. to be. Uh, I've got an environmental studies degree. I can tell you for a fact, there's no climate uh, crisis. Uh, there's weather and there are trends which go back. Uh, you know, I always ask people, uh, if you are so, uh, if you believe so much in climate crisis, what caused the boring billion? Anybody who goes back and studies geologic time understands mm. there's there's things there's a time on this planet for a billion years that that basically that we were static. How did that happen? They don't know. Uh, right. Today there's there's no scientific understanding of of what a fraction of a percent of a fraction of a percent of CO2 going into the atmosphere. CO2 is plant food, for God's sake. Uh, they don't understand it. And so what, the remedies they propose aren't linked to science. That science is very expensive, whatever they're trying to do, and they can't tell you if it'll have any effect. To me, yeah. that's, that's, uh, that's all focused on trying to have the government take control of energy not produce the best circumstance for individuals to be productive. And that's where it's dangerous. So um, one of the things, the last thing I'd like to kind of throw out there for you to think about and tell us about is what do you think we need to do to kind of push back on this? Because th at this point, uh, Ken, this is not about uh, debate, about uh, political philosophy. This is about a part of the country who is basically trying to use political mechanisms to get the government in charge of everything and then use the government to stop free speech. What, what do we need to do to, to prevent this from happening? Well, you know, uh, I, I believe that uh, President, uh, former President Donald Trump, he definitely uh, started the initiation of draining the swamp. However, there's still so much more work to do. The mm -hmm. first component that I believe all Americans are really gonna have to strengthen uh, with, with their resolve is understanding their constitutional rights. You know, when I really look at uh, an author that I really like, uh, Paul uh, Conkin, um, he talks about the four fundamentals of American government, which the, the first one is uh, the consent of a sovereign people. The second one is limited by objective moral criteria. The third is balanced in form. And the fourth is open to continuing democracy of uh, participation by our citizens. If, if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. And so first, of, and first and foremost, when I was in the Democratic Party, one of the things that uh, truly bothered me when I was in, out in Silicon Valley and I would uh, uh, attend an event uh, as an entrepreneur um, in Silicon Valley, 
I did not like the way that they treated freedom of speech. I, I truly uh, felt that they were um, uh, impeding freedom of speech to be able to say and move about and do the things that we need to do. So Americans truly are gonna have to get back to understanding our constitutional rights, holding our elected officials accountable. And also we need to usurp the power back from the arbitrary government who is manipulating uh, the policies and procedures and silencing the voice of the electorate. And we have to become more informed and, and really bombard our uh, elected officials uh, to hold them accountable because we don't have, if our checks and balances don't work in, in uh, our constitution and, and truly uh, we're losing our rights every single day. So I think that we as Americans are gonna have to get on the ground, vet these elected officials, hold them accountable for the policies uh, that, that they're passing and make sure that they follow our constitution and uphold our constitutional rights. You know, when I look at uh, what's going on uh, even right now uh, with, you know, January 6th, January 6th obviously was, uh, was, uh, it wasn't a good day, uh, but they don't talk about the peaceful protesters who were there. Uh, right. They don't talk about all the manipulation that, that, that took place with this process. And also all those individuals who are incarcerated have the right to a speedy trial. Uh, that is our constitution, but we, we see individuals are being mistreated. Um, their trials are dragging on. Their attorneys can't even get information. So we have veered off from our constitution. If we don't get back to uh, a constitutional republic, we, we're going to find ourselves uh, in a communist state and very quickly as such. So I know I agree with your assessment, Ken, and I think that's where um, it's more important in my judgment that all Americans come together to preserve the constitution and protect those things which have essentially allowed for this continued experiment in self-governance to continue. I, I just, I don't understand how people will take a position which would see those very things you just mentioned, all those things which are guaranteed because eh, politics, we just don't like you. And right. that's the other thing too, I think is very dangerous is how the left now is trying to, to basically diminish, to make subhuman anybody who disagrees with them. I think that's a very dangerous thing to do. And very I see much. it all the time. Yeah. So, uh, so Ken, uh, how do, how do people get in touch with you, uh, to find out more about, uh, you and your campaign? Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, they can actually go to my website, ncvoteharper.com. That's my last name, H-A-R-P-E-R, -E ncvoteharper.com. And they also can use uh, ncvoteharper.com on Facebook uh, to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, so definitely please follow us, like our pages. We definitely are looking for volunteers, individuals who uh, are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, we're running a clean grassroots race. Uh, we refuse to take money from special interests and PACs uh, because we believe that it voices out the voices of North Carolina constituents. And we believe that it's the new currency that woke corporations are utilizing uh, to usurp the voice of uh, everyday constituents. So uh, please follow us at ncvoteharper.com and uh, truly contact our campaign at area code 336-912-3788. Again, 336-912-3788. So I, I, I'm pretty sure I can say this safely, Ken, that you're not going to be taking a, uh, a chair on the board of Burisma anytime soon. I think I can share to say that with great assurance, uh, right? I, I can guarantee absolutely. our audience that, right? Okay. <laughs> just saying. I just want to make, make sure that we're clear on that. So Yeah, absolutely. I, I am totally focused on pr protecting uh, the national sovereignty of the United States of America. There you go. Uh, and that, that's ultimately what, what we got to focus on. We got a country to save, Tony. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Ken. Thanks for, thank great, uh, for being uh, on our Thought to Action podcast. I appreciate uh, the discussion. It's always great to, to meet someone who uh, has such a, a deep commitment to saving the republic and preserving our constitutional uh, uh, democracy. Uh, you know, I, I, I always get in trouble. It's like, no, we don't. We have a republic. It's a republic, not a democracy. I always get in the fix, but we do. We have a great uh, form of government Absolutely. that has preserved uh, our, our people and our way of thinking. And it's it's. Uh, you know, I told you when I first met you, it's like, you know, I came up through a system, the, the army, that was colorblind. We yeah. should be focused on the principles we're talking about, not on, on, on uh, uh, someone's sexual preference. Race, someone's... color, creed, sexual orientation. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, I just, it's, it's time we get back to actually emulating. Life, uh, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's it. For everybody. For everybody. So I appreciate it. Uh, so, and then, so anyway, be sure and check out Ken. 
Uh, check us Thank out, uh, London Center for Policy Research. Uh, we're on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, uh, all the social media out there. Uh, follow us on uh, on uh, or and join our Twitter. Uh, join our, please join our Patreon uh, for behind the scenes content and early access, as well as uh, ask us anything uh, participation. So I'm Tony Schaefer, President of the London Center for Policy Research, and thanks for joining us today.